Welcome to the Sleazy Podcast, the podcast about anything and everything, but mostly TV and movies. And now it's time to get sleazy. <laughs> it's the best, best opening to any show ever created. What would we do without that laugh from Chuckles? Really uh, sets the tone. <laughs> it does. It does. It brightens you up, gets you ready to record. But uh, all right, so this is episode 179 of the Sleazy Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Sleazy, and today I'm joined by Mr. PBS, of course. You know, Sleazy, not uh, not everyone needs a podcast, and not every podcast needs to be recorded. Exactly, exactly. We found that out. Um, I don't think somebody was happy with my Kentucky story. It's a scathing critique yeah. of our podcast and, and your time at Bucky's. You know, not everybody needs to record a podcast to record everything that comes out of their mind. Well, my answer to you, sir, would be not everybody needs to comment, you know, every little critique or thought they have in their mind, but you do. So actually, it is. actually everyone does need to comment. Do they on anything we post? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't got to watch it or listen to it, but you do have to comment. Yes. On it. Yes. That would be nice. I mean, I don't even care. It is what it is. I don't, I don't take things like that to heart. But uh, even if you just come, didn't watch. Yeah. Yeah. TLDR totally didn't watch. Yeah, and honestly, like when people do like write stuff like that, I, I, I just think it helps, you know, regardless. It is what it is. Exactly. Um, Your engagement is appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what would you tell me to put on that? Uh, uh, that we've we, uh, we passed, passed it, it on. along to our quality assurance uh, manager, Rob Zilla. <laughs> Who, as you can tell by Ned in the chair over here, is very uh, he's not here. Lackadaisical at his job. Yeah, he's not here. Uh, he uh, so it's you know in typical Rob Zilla fashion, you gotta love Rob. You know, you gotta love him. But typical Rob Zilla fashion, we get a, a message at what eleven something this morning. Mm. Earlier than that, maybe nine something. Yeah, I I well I saw it around eleven. But uh, should I read it in the Rob Zilla voice? Sure. <laughs> hey, people are going to think we're such dicks for this. So probably I mean, we not. kind of are. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to. We kind of are. Yeah. But it's not like I feel like I can approach it because I've been through this before. You right. Know? <laughs> but anybody with an animal has been through this before. Uh, okay. This was. In response to a question you asked at like 10 o'clock last night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, let's see here. I, so I said, what time does everyone want to record tomorrow? Rob Zilla. Whatever is best, probably with Mr. PBS, since he will be getting off work and coming straight over. So you're like, be at work until two, probably. Uh, I'll head over right after. So it's eight sixteen a.m. when he sent this. I was out cold. I needed some sleep, <laughs> brother. I'll keep you guys updated. Brownie isn't doing well. We took his sugar and it was six hundred. We gave him insulin and seeing how he's doing, seeing how he does. So it's eleven forty nine. Da, 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 da. We send a couple messages back and forth. It is now one thirty-five, and you know I think everybody kind of like knew two o'clock was the goal, mm -hmm. two to three, you know, because you work till one or two. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I can't make it. He's still not feeling well. It might take him to the ER for the second time in a week. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the dog is just so old, and they've had him on insulin for feels like three or four years now. And before that, they didn't have him on the special diet or whatever. Yeah, I mean, he's just always been a a, a, a different kind of animal to take care of. But, I mean, listen, I, I know that animals make people happy, and it's what you look forward to when you come home. But at some point, you got to be like, 
I don't even want to take myself to the ER. Right. If like, something happens to me, like I don't want that bill. And there's no animal insurance that's covering <laughs> ER visits. Like when does it when does it uh pass into like animal torture? Right, right. What did you say when you came in? You were like, Do we need to sign some uh court documents to take custody? <laughs> yeah, so the dog's not suffering anymore. Oh man. Do we need to, is it let's like Terry Shivo all over again? You know, remember her? <laughs> no, no. Wait. She was the big, it was like, it was like 20 years ago now, but she was like the lady who was like uh, brain dead or whatever. Oh, yeah. And the husband wanted to take her off life support and the parents. Oh, to keep her yeah. On life support. Yeah. They didn't want to. It was a big battle. Who could right. say, you know, who could pull the plug, so to speak? Uh, yeah, man. I just, uh, the minute that I have to buy better food for my dog than myself <laughs> and got to do all these kind of special treatments and, and the, you know, medicine that costs more than my medicine. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out of this situation. Any, any animal where you got to start doing stuff like it, it's just on borrowed time to begin with. Yeah. Yeah, you know? exactly. Let alone anything that may else that may go you know wrong with the animal. Yeah. And, and I mean, I totally get it. I, I get it. You want to hang on to these, uh, you know, they're part of your family. Some people treat them as their kids. You want to hang on to them forever. But at some point you got to sit down and have that conversation with yourself. Like, are we really, are we really making things better for him? Or are we just keeping them around? So I have something to smile at, you know, right. at the end of the day, <laughs> but I mean, listen, I hope the dog is okay. You know, that's what makes them happy. But yeah, it, it, it's, you know, they've been on borrowed time with that poor dog. And the last time I saw that dog, he could barely walk outside. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, holy shit. <laughs> the, I remember the first time I saw my dog, like she couldn't, she could barely walk outside. I was like, yeah, it's time. It's time. If she doesn't want to run out in that yard, something's up. Right. You know what I mean? But, uh, well, since Robzilla isn't here, we, we next Ted the series. We we're going to talk about that, and I was kind of hoping Hot Sauce would be here since we were moving this to Sunday, mm -hmm. but he is out as it's anniversary weekend. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it looks like beggars can't be choosers here. Get your priorities, Hot Sauce. God. Yeah, I mean, he he quit us for a fucking dead end pizza job. <laughs> I mean, he loves it. I dough slinger. I I can't uh, I can't blame him for that, but um. Okay. Uh, happy anniversary to them if they hear this. Um, hopefully, they're having a good weekend. No, they've been out and about. Yeah, I saw they they rode into Chicago, the actual you know city or mm -hmm. whatever, and they were had a day at least. Yeah, so that's cool. Um, but I think we're gonna we're definitely gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about Madam Web. I braved it. I went and saw it. <laughs> yeah, it's part of the gig. Sometimes you got to go see shitty movies. Yeah. And uh, I'll end with the beekeeper. And we're really going to start the show with uh, we came across this fucking crazy video. And if you've been on TikTok, you've probably seen this or any social media account. What is wrong with these cops? It's really it's really busted out. It's like just when you think like cop shooting people and all this other shit, like you've seen the craziest like cop shooting video. And nah, they. They're like, hold my beer. We'll we'll show you a, a crazy cop shooting video. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to try to share this. Present. Share screen. I'll do entire screen here just so we can. Oh, wait. We want to do. I got to launch this uh, link you sent because you found a good video mm -hmm. of it. But I think, it, I think this is the original video that I saw. <laughs> Acorn Cop. <laughs> I love that. Oh, shit. Wants me to solve a puzzle. Yeah, this is nuts, dude. In Florida. Fire! 
I didn't notice this part before they slowed it down and actually showed you the acorn. <laughs> He unloads. What's Jesse, what, Jesse, are you okay? What's the second copy of him shooting at either? Like what, it just says right there, like right where? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm good. I feel weird, but I'm good. I might have hit my vest. Okay. I don't know. Are you sure it hit your vest, dude? Do you see anything on my vest? Where are you feeling? Did you feel anything? My legs went numb when it okay. hit me. All right, all right. Wow. I don't know. My legs went numb for a second. I heard. I, did, I didn't see the second part. Before. I I didn't see the part where he said my legs go numb and all. Yeah, I didn't see that either. Like, are you sure your legs went numb? Listen. <laughs> like you don't even hear it right there. Slow mo. Boom. <laughs> I'm. I've heard acorns hit cars, and they don't sound like. I, you know, I, I I get it. You're like right next to it, and it hits it just right. I'm, I can see it like startling you. Yeah, I could be like, "What the hell is that kind of thing?" Like that's what a gunshot sounds like. Yeah. There's clearly a difference. I'm hit. No, you're not hit. <laughs> uh, here's a here's an article that talks a little bit about it from the Guardians. So, U.S. officer fired at. At handcuffed man in SUV after mistaking acorn for gunshot. Florida deputy Jesse Hernandez resigned after opening fire when he thought sound of an acorn hitting the police cruiser was shot from a gun. Yeah, and that's another thing. Like you search the guy, you've already arrested him, he's you've detained him, he's in the back of the cruiser. Somehow he gets a hold of a gun, he fires it and doesn't break any of the windows at you. The man, unless was, they're thinking somebody else shot at him, right? That, that, but he fires into the vehicle. Into the car, the man, uh, the um, guy in the car, the man who was being questioned about stealing his girlfriend's car was not injured during the November 12th shooting. He was taken into custody but released without being charged. I'd like to hope so. Yeah, like uh, we're gonna let you go. Just don't tell nobody about uh, none of this. As soon as I got to that fucking police station, I'd be like, I need a lawyer, please. <laughs> right. Anyone will do. This is a slam dunk. I'm going to be living comfortably you, for the rest of my life. You, you literally walk like, who wants to make some money? Yeah. Because we're making it now. Where's the, uh, and of course, the, the, uh, the memes have been rolling in off of this. <laughs> But it's just amazing, dude. It... Okay, let's see here. Yeah. <laughs> Who would win in a fight? A trained police officer or an acorn? I think the acorn won. Yeah, it was, in this fight, it did. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, what was it? There was uh, people have been like sending. Where did I put the. There's like a video. Oh, Hot Sauce shared this this one too. We we got a. He was like, "Is this worse than the acorn acorn cop?" <laughs> Tennessee deputy crashed into river after making first arrest, killing himself and the detainee. <laughs> you gotta say, I, I didn't. I remember I looked at the headline, but I didn't read into the story. Does it say what happened? I got to think this is worse than the acorn car. At least nobody died with acorn car. Yeah. Like, can you imagine sitting in a in a car handcuffed and they just start firing at you? Like, you already think it's the worst day of your life. You're being arrested for whatever bullshit. And then all of a sudden you just hear fucking a gun two, being unloaded. Two cops unloading yeah. at you. You're like, what the? Yeah, you're like, holy shit. This day just got even shittier. Uh, okay, so a deputy in Tennessee, at least this was in Florida, right? Uh, crashed into a river after making his first arrest, killing himself and the detainee, according to officials in the area. Um, how do you pronounce that? Is it Megs? Something like that. Megs County District Attorney Russell Johnson said during a press conference Thursday afternoon that the deputy's vehicle was found underwater in the Blythe Ferry area of the Tennessee River. The driver's side front window was rolled down and a person's body was found in the back seat, Johnson said. Uh, officials said later that day that the second body had been located and was identified as 35-year-old Deputy Robert John R.J. Leonard. Okay. 
Local reports have since identified the detainee who died in the backseat as Tabitha Smith. First arrest. Deputy Leonard uh, had recently graduated from the academy and had been with the Meigs County Sheriff's Office since December. Johnson said in that the arrest Leonard made Wednesday night just before 10 p.m. was his first. So did, were they like, where's this dude at? He didn't come back for a shift right. with the person he arrested. Leonard was responding to a call about a disturbance on a highway bridge between a man and a woman. But on his way back to the jail, he stopped responding to a status check. Here we go. There was kind of a last minute call after a tw- about a 12 minute gap between him radioing and he was coming back to the jail with a suspect or someone that he arrested. And there was one word that we analyzed and it was water. Johnson said, Oh shit. What a terrible thing there. Uh, Leonard also just uh, sent in a one word text to his wife saying arrest and that she responded with that sounds great. But yeah, it's always great when you arrest somebody. Okay. Got my first. Yeah. First of many, babe. Or that sounds good, Johnson said, but that added that her text never went through to his phone. He was doing other things. Leonard drove into the water near a ferry landing, an area that has a hazardous reputation locally due to the hill and sharp curve, especially at night. Officials said last month another person drove into the water in the same area but survived. Officials noted that Leonard was originally from New York and was likely unfamiliar with the area. So if he wasn't paying attention because he was distracted by the person in the back or about trying to hit the radio or sending a text at the same time, you could imagine he would go down that road. Johnson said, we're operating under the theory that this was an accident. He missed his turn. He was un he wasn't familiar and he was doing uh, other things that may have caused him to go into the water. Yikes. It's definitely uh, a bad accident to have there. <laughs> uh, I, another one where, like, imagine you're sitting in the back of a cop car. And yeah. It just goes in the water, and there you are in the back of the cop car, kind of. I think rude. she was like, pay attention to the road, motherfucker. Or maybe she was doing something, hitting the cage or something in the uh, back. I guess they'll never know. But they should have a camera in there, I would think. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. If the cop would have had a body cam. Yeah. Or if there's a camera, I don't know. It's just, it's insane, man. It's a bit more tragic than acorn cop. (laughs) Yeah. That, that, that acorn cop, man, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I I, I don't know. It's, I I made the joke in the, in the group chat. They're like, is it, is it between like the Uvalde cops who do nothing for like an hour and this guy who unloads a full clip after an acorn hits the top of his car, like there, there, there got to be something in the middle. <laughs> oh yeah, and then there was this one. It's like crazy cop news day for us. You know, I um, you know, I don't think like cops are the greatest and all that, but I don't also, I also don't think like cops are the worst or anything. Yeah, like that. I'm kind of like in the middle. It is what it is. But I really wish we had more like training or something to be a cop <laughs> because it just it always seems like it's video shows people who are super scared they're going to get shot their first day out or right, something. Right. It's just like, I get it. Being a cop is kind of dangerous, but it's not even really like one of the most dangerous jobs out there. People are, they're just on the edge, man. <laughs> and I don't blame them. It, it's, it's a dangerous job, but at the same time, when you have somebody locked up in your car and you know, they're not the issue, you can't, Right. Unload your clip on the car. <laughs> like something has common sense has to come into play here. But Those Louisville oh, officers tossing drinks out of their cars at random people oh, on the street. This? WDRB's Molly Jett explains why this has been a long time coming, Molly. This happened about four to five years ago, and the officers involved were charged and fired last year. However, this is the first time we're seeing what happened. LMPD officers were driving on Barry Boulevard in South Louisville when they spotted a woman walking down the sidewalk in the rain. This is shit high school hey, dude. Hey. How about a drink? This was a pattern. Like, that's the fam! Officers of Louisville Metro Police's former violent crime unit, the 9th Mobile Division, repeated these actions up, dozens of times in 2018 and 2019, the ever. filming the drink throwing pranks and sharing the videos with colleagues. 
the road yeah. up against the building. <laughs> Don't miss. Doesn't even On hit Saturday, him, like... more than a year after two of the officers were convicted of federal crimes and the scandal known as Slushy Gate, Slushy LMPD Gate. released Such a full a set name, of videos and other records from its internal investigation. Oh, I missed. <laughs> Before this week, the videos had only been played in federal court, with no copies released publicly. <laughs> A federal judge called their actions egregious, conscious, and shocking. Oh, shit, that's <laughs> one At least five other officers were suspended for their roles in the incident, such as helping to film or drive for the encounters, sharing laughs in a group chat, and failing to report the conduct. Damn. <laughs> Getting all these assholes off the street. Right, uh... <laughs> Get something to drink. <laughs> Sometimes they were disappointed in having to find another victim. Hey, you got directions? You know directions to the O'Reillys? Chuck it. Chuck it. Hurry. Ready? Ah, oh, no, no, no. Don't do it. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I don't know if I do it. I don't know if I do it. While dressed in uniform and driving unmarked vehicles. Unmarked. That's yeah. how they were getting people. Having fun at the ones they were sworn to protect and serve's expense. <laughs> Two like, officers working. I've, I've never thrown a drink. I don't think I've no. ever thrown anything from a, out of a car, particularly. But like that seems like a thing that maybe you do once. <laughs> Yeah. And you're kind of like, okay, that was kind of funny. What next? You know, like, I, I, re I remember seeing videos of that on like E Bombs World back in the day where people would go through drive throughs and order like milkshakes and then throw it right back at the person. Right. And even as like a 16 year old or you know, however old I was, I was like, man, that's kind of fucked up. Like, you can tell those people just fucking hate being at their jobs and then they got to deal with shit like that. Right. But imagine you're just minding your own fucking business, walking down the street, and a cop fucking hits you with a fucking big chug. Right. Like I like I like I want to know like did they did they buy everything? Did they buy their drink from like the same place every time? And like did the clerk get suspicious? <laughs> like you guys are always buying these big ass big like, gulps, but I I never seen one of you pee in the store. Guys, this is like your fourth big gulp Coke. I think you should go to the doctor. <laughs> you've got diabetes yeah something something is up here you know but ah uh, at least i didn't shoot anybody i guess yeah yeah i yeah it's totally not as bad as shooting somebody but it's still shitty like you're come on act like you've been somewhere before right. dude you're a fucking cop you're supposed to be you know one of the most dignified people in, right. in the community and here you are Rolling around like a fucking sixteen-year-old, hitting people with fucking drinks, big gulps of drinks. Like, get, I hope, you know, part of me hopes that those guys like go to jail for some kind of assault or something. I'd like to see. I wish. I wish there was a video of them having to watch those videos get played in court. Yeah, that would be great. It, like, I just hope they go to jail and somebody hears like what they did and they just fuck them up. Right. Like, I hope it was worth the the chuckle you had throwing drinks at. You know, motherfuckers that, you know, have to walk to just get to people, where they're going. Just people yeah, yeah. out for a walk. <laughs> yeah. People just minding their business, trying to enjoy what, you know, life they probably have. Right. Here you are chucking fucking drinks at them. Fucking assholes, dude. Hey, you see shit like that and you're like, there's no hope for humanity. <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a pretty fine line between like being funny and just being a dick yeah and just... that's excessively being a dick yeah that's that's for sure um so the super bowl was sunday and we got a a look at a man a couple trailers and then a, 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 like we got to see the deadpool teaser mm -hmm. uh, that was pretty cool i wasn't so hip on the the super bowl commercials this year were you i i think there's a whole article or like um discussion online 
that they they the commercials like really played it safe this year. Yeah, they there wasn't totally anything, did. Like there was, a, I didn't, I I didn't even see a lot of commercials really. That's kind of had Super Bowl on in the background, but like there was a commercial where like Arnold and Danny DeVito, DeVito were dressed up like the State Farm. Yeah, that was cool. That's kind of yeah. Like that's the only one I really remembered. <laughs> I know there's a couple other commercials out there, but a People, couple, couple other celebrities showed up in some commercials. But for the most part, everybody says they just kind of played it safe. Oh, did you see the uh, the Jesus washing the feet commercial? Yeah. Oh my god, it's so terrible. I, mean, I saw like a clip of it, but I didn't, it's not like the whole these thing. people. The money they spend to show clips of Jesus washing numerous people's feet in the community or, or people washing feet, I guess you could say, and like. Is that really Christian like? I mean, if we're gonna go there, like spend that millions of dollars somewhere yeah, else. They could have fed a fuck ton of people and and helped people out in communities, paid heating bills or, or something of that nature. Nah. I believe that it's um the company or whatever that funded that commercial is gets a lot of money from the people that own Hobby Lobby and they're yeah. known for their religious stuff. And they got in trouble for like buying artifacts from like the holy land or whatever oh yeah and they i think either some of them were fake or they had to return them or something i hope they were fake i hope they <laughs> fucking got ripped off <laughs> those people are just so fucking ridiculous me you know like if you really want to get your message out there start living by it right i mean that's the best way to get it out there start doing good no let's make a shitty commercial that's just gonna annoy people but yeah, we got to see a uh, Quiet Place Day One trailer. Rob, I bet Rob's going to listen to this and like, motherfucker, <laughs> they're talking about trailers. Talking about my damn trailers. Knew I should have came. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I mean, the movie looks good for a Quiet Place Day One, but it's not what I want to see. Like, do, do we <laughs> well, really need a prequel? Your first reaction was, don't we already know what happened on Day One? Yeah, they showed us in the second one. <laughs> like I want to know what happens to them at the end of the the second movie. Isn't this one supposed to be like day one in a, a different city? Yeah, it's in a big city. So it, you know they're in a small town, obviously in their movies. But man, set I, in New York City. Yeah. So this will be interesting. But once again, it's like, is it really something we needed? I mean, I just give me the the end of the trilogy. Uh, Despicable Me Four. Yeah don't care yeah, i haven't really passed past my past my uh cartoon watching days or, or new cartoon watching days anyway the fall guy i can't wait for that fucking movie man uh, that looks just looks like it's gonna be fun right yeah ryan gosling is like a stunt man who gets involved with some yep criminal shenanigans kung fu panda four could care less <laughs> deadpool One, and wolverine deadpool and wolverine looks really good i gotta say that uh, a lot of people are, you know, obviously they all had to analyze every last second of this right. trailer and they're like, I think we're going to get to see Wolverine fight the Hulk, which, hey, <laughs> more power to him. I hope they fucking do it. I want to see it. I don't know about you, but it, it looks like Deadpool might bring the MCU back just a little bit. You know, looks like they're going to tie the TVA in, into it and uh, a couple of other things, obviously. I think that's what people are suggesting. Like, this isn't like um like a straight up head marvel movie is sort of like a different timeline yeah. kind of which is cool that's fine yeah i'm totally for it i you know i like as much as i don't like the character deadpool i actually do really enjoy the, the deadpool movies um but yeah definitely you know at the end of two he gets his uh he gets cables time traveling equipment or whatever you want to call right. it the wristband and so you know he fucks some shit up and creates an alternate timeline <laughs> yeah but Kingdom of the Planet of Apes. Uh, did we really need another one of these? I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see where they go. This is I've liked them all, but yeah. I'm like kind of at the point where I'm like, eh, I don't know if I want it. Curious, curious to see what it is. Yeah. I don't know if that's one I'll go. Wicked. Uh, how do you feel about that? Um, Whatever. Yeah, I'm just kind of like. I think, you know, pretty famous musical. I guess um, I saw a lot of people talking about this one like, they thought the CGI was kind of like extra bad or something. Yeah, it looked kind of weird in spots. And I feel like um, doesn't it say the movie has been done for a while or something? It's one of those. Let's see if it's in the article here. I thought it's one of those movies that had been kind of done for a while, but they kind of put it on the shelf. 
I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't say on here, but yeah, I, I, I'm sure that'll appeal to some people. Maybe not us, but this was a this was a great great spot for a, a movie trip. This is probably like my favorite commercial out of all the commercials. Twisters. And I'm ne- this is just movie trailers on this site, so we really haven't gotten into. I don't know if we'll get into regular commercials, but uh, yeah, Twisters, man, the long-awaited sequel to Twister. And somebody I forget was saying, "Oh, it looks just like." a reimagining of twister and a remake and i'm like no i'm pretty sure it's a sequel so i mean but, it's about people going after a twisters yeah I mean, what's i mean okay it's kind of a remake i guess yeah as in <laughs> the first movie was about them going after some twisters i, I think know. people see the the little like balls that they release into the right the measure the winds and all that and they're like oh my god it's it's a remake they yeah. haven't developed anything since then right it seems like it's a, similar story to the first one like yeah. okay that this, it's got glenn powell in it though like 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 what like okay yes i want to see a movie about people chasing twisters just like the first movie that i wanted to see about people chasing yeah. twisters thank you yes yes i'll take it it's, i'll take it uh so is glenn powell like kind of becoming today's brad pitt <laughs> is it like uh, the handsome guy that's in movies now I, I don't know about brad pitt but yeah he's definitely one of those sort of just good looking guys who I'm interested. In I'm interested to see how his career progresses. Yeah. Like, is it is he going to progress like Brad Pitt, or is he going to? He's been in. I mean, he was in uh, Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. So he's in. He's been in a few kind of stinkers, but I still want to see that movie with him and uh, Sidney Sweeney. Right. The I forget what it's called. The one that just came out. Yeah. Not too long ago. Yeah. Whatever it is. Um. Yeah. Anyone but you. So fresh off his rom com, anyone but you. And with his new Netflix movie Hitman on the horizon, yeah, I want to see. I need to. I want to see Hitman. Yeah, that Hitman out. looks good. Uh, what's this one? If that's a kind of like imaginary friends, yeah, is what it, that's, it that's the for. funny one because it had um, what's his name, the Asian guy. Yeah, he was pretending to be John Krasinski, like he did he, in the, that yeah, episode in of the Office. Office. Yeah, that was that was a funny commercial. Yeah, I'll give him that. Commercial. I'll give him that. Monkey Man. Uh, I like I saw that and I was like Rob sent that to me weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Like and they're they're spending this money on the super like I've already seen this. Yeah. No and that's long. uh that's going to be an interesting one, I hope. Yeah, I think it'll be a great action movie. That's totally a Rob Zilla um, movie. Uh, what's his name? Dev Patel doing yeah. a sort of a sort of John Wick kind of thing. What do you think, Ned? Nah, he doesn't care. He's just here to hang out. Inside out too. Okay. I'm sure that'll be a big. Is that is Inside Out Disney? I can't remember anymore. Mm, I, Disney Pixar. To I'm get so lost together. on these <laughs> animation it's anim- companies. If it's animated, I just assume it's Disney. Yeah, Pixar. Or something. <laughs> I'm sure that'll be a big hit. And Mark Personal Wahlberg list. got a lot of shit for whatever commercial he did. There was some weird commercial that he did, and people were giving him shit for it. I, I've seen him. Uh, I've seen him showing up on a TikTok ad. Or some like prayer and meditation, yeah, kind of thing. Like whatever, Marky Mark, do your thing. Yeah, you still beat up a cop when you were a, t- a kid, <laughs> or not a cop, a, an innocent Asian, guy, Asian person. Yeah, Super Bowl twenty twenty four commercials. Yeah, what do you know? Who paid for Super Bowl twenty twenty four is conversional. <laughs> Uh, controversial he gets us jesus commercial <laughs> 10 best commercials oh there was the ben uh affleck duncan donuts one that was good i i didn't see that one but i heard about it yeah they kind of do like a a music thing they're trying to get on j-lo's record or whatever oh yeah yeah and matt damon's in it oh yeah yep yeah, yeah, i heard it yeah. oh look there's an npr one i know you'll like this Oh, Cardi B had one. Uh, I just, there just wasn't, like you said, they played it safe and they were just kind of, yeah. The Arnold one was kind of cool. I, I'll give them that. Mm-hmm. The State Farm one. Who doesn't love Arnold? Right, right. Oh, uh, the walking one. Talking like walking. Oh, yeah. BMW commercial? Yeah. Wow, come on. Oh, yeah. You drive a Bama? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, the Jennifer Aniston Uber Eats one was okay. She I feel didn't... like 
I feel like they haven't Uber Eats done like big commercials the last couple of years. I feel like yeah, it's a bunch of celebrities. Yeah, they totally have. Deadpool, Mayo Cat, and yeah, it was just yeah. This is just a lot of meh. Yeah. Like even this Mr. T Sketchers one was. Yeah, like, I think I kind of heard about that one. Yeah. By the way, Mr. T looks good for his age. I'll, yeah. I'll say that. Pity the fool. The Gronk misses the the fan duel kick one was sad because they did the tribute to uh, Carl Weathers at oh, the end yeah. of it. Yeah. That, the Exactly. Best I'm not crying, you're crying. Uh, Google Pixel 8. Mm, it was a, uh, yeah. DoorDash. Uh, the Patrick Stewart Paramount Plus one was good. Yeah. I feel like it has been going around for a while. They, yeah. They released that one early. Yeah. Yeah, they released that one early. Yeah, see, I mean, it's just a bunch of them. Yeah, even the halftime. I did you like the halftime show? Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, I just it was just okay to me. I was like, yeah. So you know, I I um, and it was it was Usher, Alicia Keys, right? Um, uh, Ludacris and and Lil John. Lil John was when he showed. I was like, yeah, what? Yeah, that was like the best part it, of the it, halftime. It show. made me kind of sad because I was thinking about it, like the songs that. Usher was kind of playing the big ones anyway, are like 20 years old. It's like, we're not the contemporary people anyway. We're like the, the legacy act now. Yeah. We're old. We're, we're the target that they're, uh, they're going after now, yeah. our age group. Yeah. So we're and definitely it was, it, old. It was a good enough. It wasn't like, uh, it was last year, Rihanna. Yeah. Last yeah. year was Rihanna. Right. She, she really knocked it out. And, uh, I mean, it, it was kind of like the Super Bowl ads. It's just kind of safe. Nice. Nothing, yeah. nothing bad. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure we've all seen the TikToks of like the millennial moms. And I like, uh, I mean, I'm a big Alicia Keys fan. Mm -hmm. And I mean, who doesn't like Usher? I right. Mean, early Usher was great, but it was just kind of mellow. And then Lil John came out. And you're like, okay, yeah. Yeah, they're aiming on a bang here and ludicrous. And everybody was making fun of uh, Jermaine Dupree's outfit. Oh, yeah. It looked like a little kid's oh. <laughs> school outfit or whatever. And he, yeah. he had the little like fluffy white socks or whatever. So it was funny because like a day or two after that, I saw a TikTok of Michael Jackson's performance at the Super Bowl in like '93 or '4. Yeah, and like he was, they were doing something where it looked like he was showing up on like the the big screens, and then he shows up in the middle of the field. Yeah, and everybody's just yelling like crazy, and it just I don't know. Michael, uh, like best halftime performance ever. I mean, I, I, I you know uh, what was when did Prince do it? Like ten years ago now. Yeah, everybody says Prince is like one of the best ones ever. I think you got to go like MJ Prince. Playing Purple Rain in the Rain. Then Lady Gaga had, I thought she had a really great halftime mm -hmm. show that one year. And well, like, I, listening to that Michael Jackson, like, you could just hear people in the crowd yeah. going nuts back then. He was on another level. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. Okay. So moving along, we also got this little trinket of news uh, earlier this week. Comcast Paramount Global held early talks about a Peacock Paramount Plus combination. So I don't know if it's, Kind of like a merger, or they're just wanting to put apps together to get more subscriptions. Yeah, I think it was it was just sort of like an early talks, really. There's nothing. Yeah, Could, you know, we always hear about these things sort of unofficially, but this seems like it's even unofficially, unofficially. Yeah, this is from Variety.com though. Could Paramount Plus and NBC Universal's Peacock join forces to take on the streamers, uh, the streaming sector sector's big bigger guns? Maybe. But while Paramount Global and Comcast NBCU's parent recently discussed the possibilities of uniting uh, the services in some kind of partnership or joint venture, there is no imminent deal expected. Talks between Comcast and Paramount Global were first reported Friday by the Wall Street Journal. Sources confirmed early discussions between the two whose respective subscription streaming platforms are significantly smaller than Netflix and Disney+. Plus, but those haven't progressed beyond uh, the spitballing stage. Reps for Paramount Global and Comcast declined to comment. The two companies already are JV partners for European streaming service Sky Showtime, established in 2021. It's designed as a streaming service for both Comcast and Paramount Global that targets European markets that, were, that weren't already being served by Peacock or Paramount+. Plus. Word of the talks about a possible... Uh, Paramount plus Peacock combination comes as Paramount Global has been the subject of a M&A chatter, uh, including speculation that the company could merge with Comcast. Comcast CEO Brian Roberts on the Q4 earnings call last month signaled 
again that the cable and media conglomerate uh, doesn't expect to pursue large M&A deals. While there may be speculation of what we could do next, I'd like you to hear it directly from me. I love the company we have, he told analysts. So the bar continues to be even higher for us to do anything other than the plan you heard today. Peacock had 31 million subscribers at the end of 2023, adding about 3 million in the fourth quarter. As of September 2023, Paramount Plus reached more than 63 million global subscribers, gaining a net of 2.7 million in the third quarter. Glowmount, or, uh, Paramount Global is slated to report fourth quarter 2023 earnings uh, February 28th after the market closes. Separately, earlier this week, Paramount Global announced a round of company-wide layoffs that will result in about 800 staffers being let go. Paramount Global is facing a few different M&A scenarios. Skydance Media CEO David Ellison has been in talks uh, with Sherry Redstone, whose National Amusements Incorporation owns a controlling stake in Paramount Global. Uh, about buying NAI last month, Byron Allen's Allen Media Group made an unsolicited $30 billion acquisition offer, inclusive of debt for Paramount Global. Though it is unclear who his financial uh, partners are, Paramount Global Chief Bob Backish and Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zasloff in December briefly discussed the idea of merging WBD and Paramount Global, but uh, that hasn't gone anywhere. So, I was getting ready to say, it wasn't just too long ago we were hearing about right. Discovery and Paramount Plus probably joining. Yeah, I don't... Um... I think people are kind of getting really fed up with these streaming services. Oh, honestly. definitely. Definitely. Between raising prices and adding ads. Yeah. And, well, and that's know, cutting, another thing. Cracking down on password sharing. Uh, Amazon Prime, you know, Prime Video now has uh, ads. I mean, it's not terrible. You watch two ads before the video starts, which I think most people will be fine with. And, you know, I've said this for a long time. You know, we talk about uh, services like Tubi and Pluto, they have commercials. And I mean, as long as it's not like but intrusive, if it's before the movie, they're whatever. also free too. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> I feel like thing. It, if you're going to add ads to something, it's got to be free to go down. Yeah. It, it either needs to be like five ninety nine, or it just needs to be free. Right. You can't have, you can't have your cake and eat it. Come on guys. You're getting too greedy at this or point. They're doing like, they're showing you an ad for the streaming service you already have. Yeah. Like, what's the point of that? Yeah. Like, are, are you are I guess, you paying yourself money to show me the ad? I guess it's so to keep you interested in other content that they have that you might not see when you're scrolling for the show that you want. Right. And that'd be, I guess that'd but, be something if they were like showing me a preview for another show or something. But yeah, exactly. You know, I, you never hear Pluto or Tubi bitching about you know, the problems that these other companies are having. Right. But then again, they are spending more money on content to get subscribers. But at the same time, it's like, you know, you got to have one or the other here. Yeah. You can't charge me and then keep charging the price and, and adding commercials in, you know, keep raising the price and adding commercials. in. it just doesn't happen. You know, it's not feasible. It's not a good business uh, plan mm -hmm. for number one. And number two, you're just alienating your customers at that point. And, you know, people aren't fucking idiots nowadays. They know when they're getting taken advantage of. I do. I, I see it like on, on TikTok and on Twitter and all that. Like people are getting really kind of tired of their streaming services and they're more willing to get rid of them. Yeah. After a certain point, you know, and, you know, I, at least you know, like Netflix is doing the thing where you can add an account for cheap. Yeah. And I think that that's one thing like, okay, fine. Like my dad's down in Florida right now and he wants to watch netflix like i've got the account so for whatever eight bucks or whatever i can add it to it okay whatever but like what do you do they want you to get like a different account for every house you go to yeah, but at that point he might as well just get his own account for you know with the ad the ad thing for 5.99 i mean well, but that, that's gonna go up yeah too. so that'll be over 10 bucks yeah so at least at stupid. least you're getting it at an okay price to add and my thing is if you don't want people to password share, then just make it to where you can't have more than two screens, you know? Well, yeah, that's, that's it. Like and they, and they've encouraged you to share your password all these years. And now all of a sudden it's just like, no, we need more money. I, I do. I feel like 
especially like Netflix, like that was part of the agreement. Like part of the part of your subscription plan was you can watch this on X amount of screens. Yeah. And I feel like it shouldn't matter if it's in the same house or not. That right. You're exactly. paying for those screens. That's my thought process about it, you know, because I always gave my mom my Netflix. You know, it was just a way of thanking her for doing things for me or whatever, you know, cooking dinner. And, right. uh, you know, I always I even upgraded to the the family plan because you got five screens that you could have open all the time. Right. And there was never this, you know, I, maybe I just didn't see it, but it just didn't seem like, oh, they all have to be on the, in the same house at the same time. Right. But it's so what? Like, what if I go to somebody's house and they don't have it? And I'm like, oh, I've got it. I, let's watch it together. I'm there watching it. What difference does it make? Right. I pay for the service. I should be able to watch it wherever I want. Right. That's how it's been advertised all these years. And now it's like, well, we need your home IP address. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck you. Even um, Amazon, I think, uh, is getting a class, a class action lawsuit. Yeah. For because they used to offer it for whatever the price was without ads, and the other now that because they're trying to do the same thing but add the ads in, they're saying well, we already paid for the ad free. You can't just up the price exactly for the ad free and be like, oh well, it's new. It's a new thing now. So these, I really, I really hope that I, I doubt it will, but I really hope it does. Yeah, these greedy fucks, man. They just need to be put in their place. And they've they've really realized that like they all thought they'd be swimming in in you know like. Uh, Scrooge and DuckTales. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they'd be swimming in money because Netflix made it work because every everybody licensed their stuff to Netflix. Yeah, Netflix got the subscribers. They got the money for licensing out. And it's just, and like, oh, it doesn't work that it way. It seems like now if you don't want HBO Max, well, Max, you can watch a lot of that shit on Netflix now. They've licensed it out. To, right. They're going back kind yeah. of the model it was. Yeah. It's just not everybody needed to have their own streaming platform. Like just license it out and make partnerships with the people that already fucking had the platforms, right. but they, they've just, they've all priced themselves out of the market. I feel like in a like I'm kind of an anti merger person. Oh, know, I, I would say so too. But like at this point, I'm like, let them all merge. Just give me one price for all this stuff. Yeah. It's exactly. almost like cable again. Just give me one price. That's not going to change yeah. every six months. Yeah, and, but I mean, competition is good and it's healthy for the market, but... Oh, absolutely. Like, it should be... Not it, when these people are all wanting to merge together. Right? And, these, these comp, this competition should be driving the prices of all these streaming services down or keeping them down. It's not. There's they just every, going up. Every six months, they want a new agreement, a new price. Yep. It, it, it's terrible. So I really, I, like, I really do. At some point, it has to bottom out, though. Yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I'm to the point now where, like, if they... Because, you know, I've got... I've got my Amazon Prime and I've got some cheap ones through that. <clears throat> but like if if any of these go up much more, I think I'm just going to just kind of start letting them go. Yeah. And I've talked about I actually had this conversation with Muzz. I was like, you know, because we do all this, like there's a lot of shows I wouldn't watch other than the talk about on here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously like streaming movies and stuff like that. And I was like, I wonder if I could just file an LLC for the show. But Oh, we lost a uh, connection to our camera here. Oh, we're still recording. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. The camera's dead. Doesn't have the light on it. Yeah. What's the deal there? <clears throat> here, let's see if we can fix it on the run here. Beep. Technical difficulties. Yeah. Maybe unplug it. Plug it back in. Turn it off and on again. <laughs> yeah. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Oh, there we go. <laughs> simple unplug of the yeah. usb word there you go uh where was i oh so i talked about getting in, in, you know an llc and i was like you know that way we could write off the expense we're right incurring for the show but i was like i, I can't share it with you guys to right. watch but i mean like what if we're a media company and that's part of our job is to watch all this stuff mm -hmm. and review it like i need to be able to share it with you guys so you can watch it right and I was like, I don't know if I can do that anymore because they are so strict on password sharing. And Hulu and Disney Plus are going to be cracking down on that here soon, too. Yeah. Which doesn't bother me. It is what it is. I got Disney Plus, so I have the, the Hulu tab if that happens. But it's just a fucking, it's shitty, dude. It's, uh, yeah. It's shitty. Um, okay. Everybody get your shit together. Yeah. All of you. So <laughs> I got physical media. I don't need you. Yeah. Um, 
So I went and saw Madam Webb the other night. And did you did you take your lotion with you? No. No. Listen. There is nothing redeemable about <laughs> Madam Webb. Even like I uh, you know, I love Sydney Sweeney. I think she's the baddest woman in Hollywood right now. But uh there was like they did their best to like not make her attractive. Yeah. And, <laughs> I did see uh like a screenshot where she looked kind of frumpy. Yeah, well, I mean, they do everything they can to, you know, make her look like a teenage girl and uh you know she's wearing a, a a school girl skirt or whatever but i mean other than that they don't they don't show the goods or anything like that I mean, it, you know it's pg-13 <laughs> what do you want uh but man she showed probably showed more on the red carpet yes the red carpet was more entertaining uh than the actual movie we'll just say that uh a friend sent me this and I just kind of laughed when I saw this. I mean, it's just so bad, man. There's no redeeming qualities of this movie. And like all these events happen in Madam Web except one. Can you guess which is the lie? Madam Web is born in a cave in Peru with the help of a magic of magic spider people. The spider, the three spider women never get their powers and are only seen in costumes during dream sequences. Evil Spider-Man is killed by large by a large Pepsi sign. Madam Web becomes wanted for kidnapping by the N NYPD. <laughs> Madam Web runs down Evil Spider-Man in her car, not once but twice. Peter Parker is born without a name, and Madam Web is inexplicably splits into three ghost-like copies of herself near the end of the movie. My my initial guess when I read this earlier was one of the two uh spider-man ones <laughs> no oh really both both of the spider-man ones happen i i want to say all of this happens in here but it, you know i can't remember if they actually named peter parker uh but you do get to see you know so is this technically a prequel then Oh yeah, oh, it takes place in two thousand three. Okay, okay. I, that's I, when I read that the first time. I I didn't realize that it was a prequel. I was like, okay, I guess it's a prequel. Yeah, I forgot that Madam Web. I guess could kind of see into the future or whatever. Yeah, yeah. She sees events before they happen, and I don't really remember a whole lot about Madam Web. I mean, I knew that, and yeah. I remember the you know every occasional encounters or whatever. But my God, this movie, it's shit. It's fucking shit, dude. Um so not i don't think like well i'll just say it they're all bad they're all bad in this movie and i feel bad for the girls that were cast in this movie because you can tell like aside from dakota uh what's her name uh, dakota johnson yeah whatever her name is the 50 shades of gray chick mm -hmm. um I feel like they all wanted to make a good movie for the most part. I feel like she was just kind of cashing in. Well, I don't know if you, the the theory going is that she thought she was going to be in a Marvel movie. Oh, Lord. She didn't realize she was going to be in the Sony-verse <laughs> Spider-Man movies. And she actually, I guess, um, like, after she signed on or, like, as soon as she was done, she, like, fired her agents. Oh, I would too. Yeah, she fired like whatever. She quit the agent company that she had and went to somebody else. So there's this, there's a whole kind of th theory going on that like she kind of knew she was going to be in some crap and was kind of, she, she sort of bamboozled herself into it. Yeah. Dakota Johnson, uh, Isabel uh, Merkid. I don't know how you say her name, Sydney Sweeney and Celeste O'Connor. And I felt like they all were trying to do good. You know, they felt like they wanted to make a good movie, obviously. I mean, nobody wants to just be in shit. Right. But it's so bad. There's just nothing redeemable about this movie. The supporting actors, like the guy that played the villain was terrible. The way they had him speaking. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just so bad. Like Mike Epps is in this. And I didn't even realize it was Mike Epps until after I watched the movie. Uh, I mean, they just, he wasn't Mike Epps in it. <laughs> uh, Adam Scott was in it. He plays Ben Parker. Okay. Yeah, I think I saw I saw something with him in it. I mean, Adam Scott is Adam Scott in the movie. Right. But they totally just take a shit on Ben Parker. I mean, like, <laughs> they they really tried to connect this into, 
you know, where they could connect it to one of the right. either uh, Andrew Garfield Spider Man or obviously uh, what's his face is Spider Man Toby, uh, not Toby. Uh, oh, Tom Holland. You Tom Holland because it's in two thousand three, so he would have been born in two thousand three and then grown up to you know be Spider Man in twenty sixteen ish or whatever you want right. to call it, but it's so fucking bad, dude. And the movie starts out with this pregnant lady looking for the spider in, you know, Peru Peru in a cave. (laughs) Yeah. Jungles of Peru or whatever. And you're just like, okay, why is this pregnant lady out here? And she's hired security or whatever. And she, she traps this spider. And then all of a sudden the security guard turns on her and shoots everybody. Mm. He accidentally shoots her. He takes off running with the spider but then these spider people just are like flying around through the che- uh, trees and they save her. They take her back to this uh, cave and they're like in this magical water or whatever. And they're trying to save her, but they don't. The spiders crawl on her and bite her. But she just gives birth to the baby in the 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 cave. And somehow they get the baby back to <laughs> authorities. And it, it's just a hot mess from start to finish. And like we saw that that meme about the Pepsi sign killing the the villain at the end. Totally right. true. <laughs> totally true. He gets killed by a Pepsi sign. Product placement. Later. And look, I wanted to like this movie. What I mean, four attractive ladies that are kicking ass, and it's in two thousand three, like our time when we were in high school graduating. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh man, this I can relate to this movie. Nope, it's Take just me back. <laughs> it's just it's terrible. Like, there's a scene. Where they had, they, you know, they got to throw Britney Spears in there. Oh, yeah. So they put uh, Toxic in one of the scenes. <laughs> and it happens to be one of the scenes, you know, that she tells the girls to stay put while she runs out and does a little, gets her mother's journal so she can read about this and solve the mystery without, you know, little okay. to no information. It's so bad, dude. It's so bad. <laughs> and you, you, you're watching this movie and you're like, how did they, did somebody not watch this <laughs> or check in periodically to see the rough cuts? And they were like, Oh, th- I think we've got something big here, but I should stop you there and, and remind everybody that it, this is a Sony picture. Yeah. And and Sony with the exception of like Spider-Man and maybe like the last Ghostbusters movie yeah. has spent like the last decade flushing their movie down the Just toilet, <laughs> throwing money to the shitter. But you're watching this and you're like, how is it that, somebody like this can write a script they can go through the motions get all these um i mean obviously there's two well-known actresses at this point right. in this movie and you know adam scott's not a cheap ticket i mean he's pretty well known nowadays but they do this and they're like no one checks in on this investment that they're making and they just think because they've achieved some success through marvel nowadays with tom holland spider-man that they can make these movies like man, this pipe dream of the Spider Verse that they have going on, <laughs> and like just fucking ended already. Like we're trying to make the Spider Verse happen. Like I'm, I'm watching this after I get out of the movie. I'm thinking like, there's only one man that can fucking save us from the <laughs> shitty Spider Verse that they keep trying to, you know, sh- you know, just push on people. Like, can David Zaslav merge with fucking Sony Pictures and just shell these fu- shell these fucking movies so we don't have to deal with them? We should we need to make that make, make that like a TikTok. Like a person reads a bad uh, movie I, idea to David says, film it and shelve it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just so fucking bad, dude. Uh, <laughs> like, and so here's my checklist for this that I wrote down earlier. Uh, Madam Webb, no redeeming qualities. Supporting actors were terrible. Uh, jokes that just aren't funny. Oh, like yeah. there's a scene where she's starting to realize that she's gotten powers from the spider bite that her mom you know whatever was researching or whatever Mm -hmm. so she tries to climb on the wall and she falls down (laughs) and it's like no one in the theater laughed except for the autistic guy sitting a few seats down for me Uh, that was another thing Uh, it was just gone from the beginning of the movie this autistic fellow was sitting in the same row as me a few seats down and he wouldn't shut the fuck up he kept telling his dad like Ah. he knew everything about madam web and all the characters (laughs) you know you know something's up with the dude so you're not you're not like shut the fuck up obviously 
least but, at least he had a good time. Yeah, at least he had a good time. <laughs> he seemed to like the joke, and uh, uh, he was the only one that laughed. Yeah, uh, good for him. Um, you know, the spider people, the magic spider people. That was another thing. Like, <laughs> man, uh, do you think at some point with Spider Man being around, we would have heard about these spider people? At some point, uh, not from Sony, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and then the the ending ah it's just it's terrible dude like i saw the ending to this movie and it was reminiscent to when remember when we went and seen green lantern oh boy and old dude come rolling out in the the wheelchair and i i laughed out loud (laughs) i saved myself from laughing out loud because i didn't want to offend the autistic gentleman down the the row from me uh but they cut to the scene of her in the tower, you know, at the top of this, uh, she's in like a penthouse tower or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, kind of moving herself around in the wheelchair. Cause you know, the end of the movie, she gets into a terrible accident or whatever. And becomes her eyes are all fucked up from doing whatever, seeing the, okay. yeah, it's just, it's ridiculous, dude. But she like, she's sitting at this, the top of the tower with her eyes and she's like she's got the sunglasses on they're w- real weird looking sunglasses and she's just looking out into the window even though she can't see and it's so cheesy like she knows the girls are getting ready to come up so she turns the wheelchair around and they come in with takeout and she's like they're like oh you okay you know sorry we we you know you couldn't see the menu or whatever and she's like oh i can see better than what i've ever seen before <laughs> it's just so cheesy dude and it's like the writing is terrible uh i mean there i guess you could say like there was some cool scenes with like the evil spider-man guy but it's just so bad dude it's so bad and, and I'm not even going to say they were cool scenes because there's just nothing redeemable. Uh, that's that's terrible. You hate to hear that that these people just and you know a like movie. I would have not seen this had we didn't need something to talk about. <laughs> like that's the only reason I went was to go and have some kind of you know a segment for us you, on the you show because you heard how horrible it was supposed to be. Yeah, and it, you had to go watch the car wreck firsthand. Yeah, exactly. I had to see how bad this motherfucker unfolded before my eyes, but. And that's another thing, like they advertise this movie as if you're going to see these chicks kicking ass and all that. And it's not a movie about. It's not really like a superhero movie. No, it's not a superhero movie. It's a movie about this girl that happens to have some powers and she sees the future and she wants to stop this guy from killing these girls. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole movie, you know, like she steals an ambulance. She steals a taxi. And somehow, like, in the middle of the movie, she goes to Peru or whatever to find out what happened to her mother. And she comes back, and they're still with Ben Parker. Like, she makes the girl stay with Ben Parker. But, uh, like, somehow she comes back, and she still has the stolen taxi. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I mean, you're just like... She left it in the long It's little things like that. Lot. Yeah, like, like, the cops didn't find the fucking stolen right. taxi cab at the fucking airport or wherever the fuck she went and she's wanted by police for kidnapping these girls at some point she made it onto an international flight she made it onto an international flight exactly it's just little things like that and you're like why this movie is just so fucking all like did they not think of this does nobody double check this shit like but you could tell they thought they had a fucking home run Mm -hmm. and then they realized oh this is a big steaming pile of shit (laughs) We've got to go through and cut some things out, chop it up, uh-huh. and just make it a standalone movie. Uh-huh. Like, I, to say that this is reminiscent of the early 2000 superhero movies when they first started making these movies would be a compliment. Yeah, it makes, makes you feel bad for those 2000 superheroes. Yeah, movies. like it's nowhere near close to those. It's that bad. But, ah, man. I'm it, reading here on the Wikipedia that originally they were going to originally the movie was set to be in the nineties and it was going to be Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker. Yeah. But for whatever reason, they ended up going with the Tom Hall and Peter Parker, which would put it in the early two thousands. Yeah. So. <laughs> it, it, it's just, it's a shit movie. It really is dude. And I'll just throw this up here. Like this is more entertaining 
than the actual movie. <laughs> the pictures of the premiere party. Good Lord. Yeah, you don't see any of this in the movie. Yeah, he's... And, and that's the thing. Like, if you've got a bad movie, you've got to make something out of it. Like, and granted, these are, you know, teenagers or whatever, but they made her, you know, uh, her character was kind of like a punk mm -hmm. chick character. She's wearing like the belly shirts that were popular in the early 2000s with the, the jeans a little bit showing the underwear line yeah. and all that. So it's just, I don't know, man. It's like, there was a couple scenes where they showed Dakota Johnson's butt. And yeah. that was like, you know, just because of the camera angle. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if you're going to make it a shitty movie, you could at least use what you have and, and make the sex appeal out of it or something. Even even that, uh, what was the other Sydney Sweeney movie we just talked about that she was in? Oh, yeah. Like, even they managed to get her in like a bikini or something. Yeah, well, I mean, that. that's Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> right. Make the sex appeal and sell tickets that way. But they couldn't even do that right with this movie. And I get it. You know, you want to make these empowered, you know, characters and they're women. You you don't want to totally sell it on the sex appeal, but at some point you got to. I mean something in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm reading uh like this is the director, SJ Clarkson. This is her first film. She did some TV work in uh Britain. So I kind of feel bad for her. Yeah. And then the um the screenwriters, Matt Sazama and Burke Sharpless, they're they're known for writing. Uh, they're, they're a team. They wrote uh, Dracula Untold, The Last Witch Hunter, and Gods of Egypt. And I've seen and that's none of another those. thing. The director uh, and the writers, like they they're all they did the Morbius movie, right? And then they did those movies, and somehow they got another movie. Like, how is it that you can make shit after shit after shit and still get, keep getting awarded work? Uh, Sony, call us. Yeah, I mean, at some point, you got to say, I mean, this just isn't working out for us. We need to go another direction and at least try to save what we've started. Nope, they can't even do that. But in Dakota Johnson's character is a paramedic, by the way, and they made Ben Parker a paramedic. Uh, wasn't Ben Parker always an out-of-work electrician, you know? I don't, yeah, I don't recall. I thought it was just, I mean, like, that's fine that they changed right. it, but at some point, like, that's the, I don't know. He was kind of like a tradesman, I guess yeah, you'd yeah, say, yeah. but that's the whole thing. Ben was out of, out of work and Peter was, uh, you know, struggling. His family was struggling to make ends meet, which, you know, it's fine for this movie that he's working obviously because Peter isn't around yet, but then they made like Emma Roberts was in this. She played Peter Parker's mom. And mm. they were talking about, you know, where's, where's the father at? Oh, he's, I don't know where he's traveling. Yeah. That's what kind of made me feel like they were trying to get it in the, the Andrew Garfield realm of right. Uh, the spider verse. They had that whole story with traveling and all that might've did it on purpose and all that. But it, man, like, I don't like if I'm Emma Roberts, I'm suing <laughs> these people for damages to my career. If I'm anybody that played in this movie, Sydney Sweeney, Dakota Johnson, Anybody that had a name before they played in this, I'm fucking suing Sony Pictures. Cashing my check and getting out of there. For damages to my career. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's that bad, dude. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think anybody blames them at least. Yeah. Uh I know some people have really shit on them. Yeah. Dakota Johnson's just kind of got that cheesy tone as an actress. She's a very aloof. But like I was saying, there are CW shows that <laughs> put this fucking production to shame. And I mean, that's low budget production uh no name actors and actresses i mean what how bad does it get before you realize you have a problem at sony pictures it, it just it's terrible dude but the other movie i saw was uh the beekeeper with <laughs> <laughs> the the beekeeper starring jason statham I can't, I can't, I don't think I can do a, a Statham X. So oh, before we get into the beekeeper, I do have to tell you, there was a scene in there. She's a paramedic, mm -hmm. right? And when they're running from evil Spider-Man, they hold up in a, uh, a, a shitty hotel mm -hmm. and she's teaching them how to do CPR uh -huh. uh, for whatever reason, in case something happens to one of them. And they don't really like show you them like doing the compressions or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you just see like the heads like Bob bobbing. And I'm like, they like nobody saw this scene in the movie and they were like, we should probably cut this and save the girls some embarrassment right. here. 
but no, they all went around in turns, you know, bobbing, and she's like, yeah, good, good. You're doing a good job. And they're like, you're a good teacher. I mean, it's just so cheesy, dude. Like the, the lines they make these people say and the situations they have them in this movie, you're just like, who who thought this was a good idea? It's just, that's why I'm saying that. They Whoever need, thought it was a good idea, all got fired. <laughs> yeah. No, they're going to get another movie, probably. probably. They're going to pick some obscure fucking character from the Spider universe, and they're like, let's make that movie, and somehow we'll connect this to one of the Spider-Mans that are popular. No. Somehow. Just give up this pipe dream, Sony. Let us let us move on to something else. But what we have, what uh, Craven, the hunter. Oh yeah, yeah that's, that one's coming that's out. That's coming out. And I got to I got to say I don't have any faith in that. It's got to be shit. It's got to be complete dog shit. And if I'm that guy that's playing in that movie, <laughs> I'm already suing them. I'm asking for a raise real quick. Yeah, like I need money for lost uh work over the years that you're going to damage my reputation by sharing in this or starring in this movie. Okay, so moving along, I onto a happier subject. Yeah, onto a better movie. And this, you know, the beekeeper with Jason Statham. Listen, I've said this before. I'll watch anything with Jason Statham in it. I don't care how bad it is. I'm going to watch it and I'm going to have fucking fun watching it. And, you know, the movie itself is really silly. The plot to it and everything. So here's the synopsis to it. One man's brutal campaign for vengeance takes on national stakes after he is revealed to be a former operative of a powerful uh, clandestine organization known as beekeepers. Uh, David Ayer is the director of this. And you watch this movie and you're like, how was suicide squad bad? Sure. Or, you know, like I really want to they see, chopped it up. <laughs> I, I really want to see David Ayer's cut of suicide squad just to see how bad they fucked his movie up right. because everything else I've watched has been genuinely watchable or good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh but uh so anyways this stars uh jason statham uh emmy raver lampin lampman uh bobby natery uh josh hutcherson is the villain in this movie okay. as much as you can make a villain out of this yeah uh jeremy irons is in it and he's not really a villain but he's just somebody that's entwined with the villain mm -hmm. he plays like an ex-cia guy goes to the private sector to do security or whatever you want to call it for this company to kind of keep their image alive or whatever to he's basically the babysitter for Josh Hutchinson's uh, character. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> great movie, dude. Uh, it had a very throwback vibe to that early two thousands action movies. You know, mm -hmm. when Statham first came along, mm -hmm. like I'm watching this and I'm like, this has total trans. Uh, transporter one vibes to it yeah but so the movie starts out he's just kind of taking care of his beehives on this lady's property and kind of helping her out with some things and she gets this like virus message on her computer where her all of her stuff's locked out and she right. can't get into it so she calls the number and they're like hi ma'am this is such and such from your virus protection company we just need you to do this and that and they trick her into clicking on this link and she obviously runs some kind of like foundation that has millions of dollars in it mm -hmm. and they take all the money and there's like a whole room of these people that are just scamming people right. left and right. Like this would happen. I don't know if this happens in America, but they're all in America. Right. And they're in like an <laughs> office building and these people all willingly know that they're stealing from people day <laughs> in and day out. But fast forward, they take all of her money. She realizes all the money's gone and she realizes that she's been scammed and she shoots herself over it. Mm -hmm. Well, he goes in and discovers her because he's supposed to have dinner with her and realizes she's shot herself. Mm -hmm. And her daughter shows up at the same time, who happens to be an FBI agent. Yeah, okay. But doesn't really <laughs> act like an FBI agent. Like it's so silly, but they make it work because they never really take it seriously. And Jason Statham's character is obviously attached to this lady and he's pissed and he finds out about it. So he goes on this manhunt to mm -hmm. just fucking take this company down. And he goes in and he beats some people up security guards and torches the office. And then he goes after the, the people that are running it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because of his connections as a beekeeper, he finds out who, you know, is attached to this company and, to make a long story short, the president is also attached to this guy. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, and it's just this long story. And he just and they call in a favor to get be other beekeepers to kill him. And okay, it's just so fucking silly. It's entertaining, mm-hmm. like crank style, you know. I've heard almost every review I've heard is sort of generally positive. Yeah. Even uh, if they have things about the movie they don't like, they they it's all kind of like a throwback fun action movie. Oh, it is, dude. It, like I watched this movie and I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. I've been wanting to see a this type of movie for like 10 years now. Somebody said, give me, give me 20 of these Statham movies. Just give me Jason Statham killing a bunch of people. <laughs> like, I don't care how outrageous the kills are, mm-hmm. and that's the thing. And the like the the gang of like hitmen they they hire to kill him or even like fucking they're like over the top like silly like yeah. people you know like one guy doesn't have he has like a bionic leg or something okay. and it, it's just ridiculous and he's just so like cartoonish like you yeah. know but it was so much fun dude and like the movie never really takes itself seriously and because of that it enables itself to be like over the top fun for you in the action but uh and jeremy irons was great in it too I'll, i gotta give him credit mm-hmm. on that and even though I wanted him to have a bigger role, they kind of set it up to where like the movie just fucking ends. Yeah. It, like it, it just ends and that's it. And you're just kind of like, okay, he, you know, there could totally be a sequel to this because mm-hmm. Jeremy Irons character is still in there. And uh, obviously Jason Statham's character is in there and they're kind of like after him, but you know, he just kind of, he accomplishes his mission and then boom, it's over. You just kind of yeah. off in the sunset. Yeah. And you're like, fuck yeah. Dude. Back to the bees. Yeah. And I really hope they do a sequel to it because it was fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. I hope they do a trilogy to right. it. it. It's kind of like his, not really, you know, how Sylvester Stallone had his thing with uh, the expendables, mm-hmm. but, you know, it could kind of turn into that where he has other low budget kind of action stars kind of come in and be the villains that he fights or whatever, mm-hmm. kind of help him out. But I think he's got another franchise on his hands here, yeah. you know? Listen, they made three movies out of the transporter. They can make three out of this. <laughs> I'm curious. I did want to check this one out. I, I didn't get around to it. I think it's on uh, VOD already. Too. Yeah, it's on video on demand, I believe, right now. But it, this is one like, don't waste your money seeing Madam Web. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're going to go to the theater, go see Jason Statham kick some ass. If it's still in theaters, if not, fucking rent it, dude. When it's available to rent, rent it. I know I'm going to fucking, I'm going to add this to my digital collection. I yeah. don't know if I'll buy a true Blu ray for it. But it was it was fucking good, man. And I've had a fucking ball watching mm-hmm. this movie. And it, I'm sad that Rob Zilla is not here because he he did right. tell you everything that I'm forgetting to mention that I, he liked. He's salivating over it. But yeah, I'll tell you, there's uh, there's this one Asian actor in the background. Yeah, yeah. And, and he was in a 2007 action movie made in Hong Kong, seen by 20 people and me. Yeah, <laughs> he was in this shitty Asian movie that I really enjoyed. But Rob noticed this guy, I, I want to say Taylor, Taylor James. He was the, the one of the main villains towards the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you see it and you're like, I've seen this guy before in something. Probably right here, Zack Snyder's Justice League. But what has he got here? I'm trying to think. Uh, he's just one of those faces you've seen him. But I don't know where I've seen him from exactly. But I would, if I had to guess, it would be Zack Snyder's mm-hmm. Justice League. But he was, I think Vikings Valhalla is probably where most people recognize him. TV from. show, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But he, he's just got one of those faces. You're like, that's a fucking bad guy right yeah. there. <laughs> like that's a guy who just Jason Statham's gonna fucking kill. Sometimes that's all you need is a good face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, very entertaining. I think I gave it like three and a half stars mm-hmm. on Letterbox because it was just so fucking fun. Solid rating. Yeah, I mean. But yeah, if you're a Jason Statham fan and you liked Transporter, Crank, I mean, really any of his action mm-hmm. movies, you're gonna fucking love this movie. So it's you, you know what you're getting, yeah, with Jason you, Statham. You definitely know what you're getting. You're getting some off the wall action scenes, some shit that's gonna make you laugh, and you're gonna be like, "Holy shit!" A mm-hmm. couple of times through the movie. But that's all we have for you for episode 179. Do you want to mention X Men? Where we go oh yeah i totally forgot about x-men i did put a picture in the uh in the group in the group chat in there just we want to have something to throw up uh, is it the comparison no no it's not that one i'm that, totally i think that one's in the group in the group chat i'm excited for uh was it x-men 97 is what they're calling it yep so 
let's just see if we can pull this up on IMDb real quick. Good call on that, dude. I totally forgot to mm-hmm. call this out. So it'll be like our little bonus thing here at mm-hmm. the end. X Men ninety seven. We got the first trailer for this, and they totally set it up and kind of made you feel like you're, you know, watching it on Saturday mornings. But it looks like uh, Professor X bites the dust here and leaves the X Men as legacy. Similar. I don't, I don't know if I ever saw the end of the cartoon series. It, I feel like it just ended, didn't it? Yeah, well, that that was the ending where he yeah. Is you know, back in the day in the nineties, there. Yeah. Either you saw it or you didn't. <laughs> I feel like they just canceled it at some point, didn't they? And yeah, didn't really much. get a true ending. I don't know. I'm definitely going to rewatch the original X Men series before. It should be. It's on. Uh, it's on Disney Plus. Plus right? yeah, well, yeah. Which is where this will be. But it looks like it's going to be a similar animation style, kind of mixed in with the new like what if style they're doing. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm totally stoked for it. It looks like you know all of our favorite characters are going to be in it, aside from uh, Charles Xavier, obviously. Mm-hmm. And who <laughs> uh, knows? I'm sure they'll find a way to work him in. Yeah, I don't think that the same people are going to be playing a lot of the the actual voices. You know, I I don't know who played the original voices, but it does look entertaining. I'll say that. But man, did they fucking. Uh, we're not getting like sexy rogue and they got rid of the cheeks. Where's the yeah, cheeks, man? I, I'm just like, this is some bullshit. And it's just funny because obviously we wouldn't have noticed any of that when we were kids watching it in the nineties. Oh, I definitely noticed they were all fucking hot. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, they were definitely like uh muscular or whatever, but you see that you see, uh, we've all seen the uh, pictures of rogue from the 97 movie with the, with the cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> we, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> This right here, hold on a second here. This right here is the 90s version of X-Men. Right. Look at that ass <laughs> that Rogue has. Look how hot Rogue is. And I mean, let's face it, they're superheroes. They're supposed to have immaculate bodies. Right. The best features that anyone can have. And then we we fast forward to X-Men 97 here. Where's that butt at? No booty. Why they do my girl like that? <laughs> ah, that's just ridiculous, isn't it? It's a shame. No, no cartoon cheeks. It really is. Okay. You said you put something in the, uh, yeah, it was just a picture of it to show the animation style there. Okay. Hold on. Let me get back to the group here. Uh, let's go home. I still, I think I've still got it at home somewhere, but I still remember going to like Toys R Us in the nineties and they had like, uh, some of these episodes on VHS. Oh yeah. You can get them at pizza hut too. Yeah. <laughs> when you order like a large pizza, they give you the, yeah. the VHS of an episode. Yeah. I remember I had like two VHSs of the episode one or yeah. whatever. And I fucking rewatched them until the film went. Yeah. Fucking... So I think I, I still might have my VHS at home. Maybe. Yeah. I probably have it here somewhere I in a box. I don't know. Okay. View all comments. Where is it at here? I don't see it. it. Should be in there. Should just be the picture. It might be like the very first thing. I get maybe you got to do like all comments or something. You know they hide them sometimes. Oh yeah, that's ridiculous. Facebook. Oh, here we go. Yeah, but I'm I like I like the I like the '90s animation style. I like this. This is keeping it pretty pretty, pretty close, close. Really, yeah. The I think I feel like. Um, the nineties animation style is kind of making a comeback. So did you see where they're making morph? They're, uh, I do have some beef with this. Uh, so morph is uh, non-binary, non-binary, and he's not a dude anymore. He's this like, what's the Harry Potter guy? Oh, the, Voldemort. The, yeah. He's like a Voldemort looking dude. In the I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't really care. I get it. Morph's my dude though. Yeah. Like, why are they going to do him like that? Yeah. I, I, I get maybe uh, not liking how he looks, but like the whole non-binary thing. Like, it is a character that can morph in between anything. Yeah, it that's wants fine. To be. But why does he have to be like a mannequin looking thing? Like, right. why can't he just pick? Look like something. Yeah, look like a person. <laughs> right. Yeah, that is a little. It's weird. Yeah. I know that much. Yeah, I like I like the the non binary idea. It's kind of cool. But yeah, the the beef with making him look like that. Yeah, it's, it's just weird. Like he doesn't even have a nose. Like, right. come on. But so, who was your favorite X Men growing up? Uh. 
I was a big Cyclops fan. Oh, you were such a... I know uh, everybody says he's a dick, but he's he a was dick. the leader. Only douchebags like Cyclops. He was the leader. And let me guess, your favorite Ninja Turtle was Leonardo. No, I was, I was a Donatello. Okay, okay. Like I'll nerd, give you some credit. The nerd with a stick. Yeah, I'll no, give you I some like, credit there. I, yeah, like, again, everybody everybody says Scott Summers the dick. He is. Um, he's a dick. I like. I was. A, I was a Beast fan. If I had, if you asked me, like, just my favorite X Men character, not uh, not on the series regularly, was uh, Nightcrawler. Okay, I like Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler a lot. was a badass. Yeah. Um, I liked Wolverine. Wolverine was my mm-hmm. dude. I love the attitude and the you know march to my own beat kind of thing that he had I going still have, on. I still have my 90s Wolverine action figure at home somewhere. Oh, sure. man. I had I biggest mistake of my life, but I for Christmas one year, I asked for the they had these like 10-inch mm-hmm. uh, figures, mm-hmm. and I got Wolverine, Cyclops, and Beast. Yeah. And I ended up giving them to my brother <laughs> when he, you know, he was a kid because right. I was, you know, graduated, and my mom had them in a bag that he found, and she was like, can he have them? I was like, yeah, I don't care. Right. He fucking tore them all ah. up. Ripped Wolverine's claws off. Uh, decapitated beast or some shit. I don't know what he did with them. But Damn kids. No respect. No respect for the action figures, buddy. But uh, I wish I would have kept those, man. They were so fucking cool. Yeah. I think I remember those ones. But I liked, I really liked Wolverine. And then uh, fucking... Uh, Gambit, I, I love Gambit. Say Gambit. Gambit was so cool with those fucking cards, Gambit. and he had the the style. He could talk to the ladies and Cajun accent. Yeah, he was so cool. What I mean, and uh, you know, Nightcrawler's probably like right behind uh, them. You know, obviously, uh, but Beast was cool too. Beast never got enough credit, I don't mm-hmm. think, because I mean, in the cartoon, he was in jail for like right most <laughs> of the cartoon. I did like the um, uh, you could see um, Cable and Bishop when they do like the Days of Future Past. Yeah. Uh, episodes or whatever those bishop episodes. was always really cool yeah. cable's another underrated yeah like because he's kind of a bad guy but he's not really a bad guy right like he's just trying to do the right thing <laughs> shows but, up trying to kill all the x-men or whatever man i tell you i'd be a dead motherfucker if rogue was interested in me right it's so- I'd be like she'd be like i can't touch you i'll suck your soul out like just do it like i'll kill you in five seconds that's all i need yeah I'll, at least i'll die happy <laughs> I'll die done. Yep. Just throw me in the Scioto River afterwards <laughs> and call it a day. Yeah. But it looks like was it Jean's pregnant in this one? So I don't know. I didn't yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, look. Look, this is Jean Gray next to Okay. Yeah, she's got a little belly okay. baby bump there. I saw that they did like a thing in the in the trailer where like Gambit jumps on Wolverine and like supercharges Wolverine with his yeah, kinetic with his claw. Like, that looked fucking cool, didn't it? Yeah. So Oh man, that show was so fucking cool. The the Blackbird, like how cool was it that they could just fly a Blackbird out of their fucking basketball mm-hmm. court? I'm I'm sorry, children listening, but cartoons used to be better. Yeah. I, I don't want to sound like an old man yelling at clouds, but cartoons were better. They were awesome. And X-Men was actually like very adult themed. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. a lot of political overtones in it. And it was just a really cool show. I loved <laughs> I loved X-Men. I loved uh the the Fox um Spider Man. Oh yeah. That, that when they had those back to back, that was like the best fucking Saturday morning. Ever. Batman, the animated series, same same yeah. time. Yeah, they were crushing it at one point in time. Take me back. Yeah. Oh man, if you could just go back and have a bowl of fucking <laughs> your your favorite cereal and watch that for the Saturday morning before your parents got up, like that was a day. Mm-hmm. That like, day was made before it was even going. But all right, so Fun now stuff. Fun stuff. Now we're going to end the show. That comes out next month of march by the way okay okay so i think it's only like a couple of episodes too uh, let me look it up real quick wouldn't surprise me yeah the way they do these things anymore yeah i want to say it's not that many but maybe hopefully they'll be like an hour long or something i'd be fine with that so uh, hurry hurry it's so sad we don't have rob zilla here to do that uh it's seven thirty-two minute episodes <laughs> i don't see it on here but yeah because if I'm looking here on the IMDb, three episodes, three episodes, three episodes. So that seems like that's all people are. Mm-hmm. I just hope, I hope this time Magneto wins. <laughs> Magneto was always right. Yeah. <laughs> Is it bad that you root for the, like, I just, I, I, you know, the, the bad guys just resonate with me now days in my life. Like I just, I'm able to relate to them. 
I tell you, you got you got to watch some of these, um, especially superhero movies. Like the bad guy is usually pretty right. Yeah, and in fact, he's so right they got to have him kill a bunch of innocent people. <laughs> yeah, like man, if you'd have just you were right until then. Yeah. You just dial it back a little bit. Like, why do they have to kill the innocent people? Right. Why can't they just go and blow, like, you know, <laughs> the, the corporation up with the evil guy in it? You right. know? Like, everybody points at a Killmonger from Black Panther. Like, he was actually right about everything. Yeah. And then he just killed some innocent people. He didn't have to do that. He could have just been right about it. <laughs> dial right. it back. Dial it back, villains. So, this has been episode 179 of the Sleazy Podcast. The world-renowned Sleazy Podcast. I'm Sleazy right. Podcast 97? Yeah. Um, we'll be back in two weeks. Hopefully we'll have our castmate Rob Zilla back. Can you, can you, can you see into the future since you got your glasses on? You do your Madam Web scene to the future. I'm not seeing better than I've ever seen before. <laughs> so no, I cannot do that. <laughs> and I haven't been bit by a magical spider in the Amazon. Uh, but, you, but you did say you have a mouse living in the walls, maybe. So who yeah, knows? Yeah, there there is a mouse down here. Maybe I'll get mouse like power. It could be, uh, what's, uh, wasn't the, wasn't there a rat guy on, uh, uh, I, I think there was, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I mean, aside from, aside from Splinter, right? Right, but, right. Uh, I can smell better than I've ever felt before. There's cheese around here somewhere. Yeah, I already have that superpower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll be back in two weeks. So until then, my call to action, as always, hit that smash, uh, smash the like button, hit the like button. Uh, like subs- the smash button, smash the like yeah, button. Yeah, do it, whatever you got to do to hit that like button. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a um, Discord, now. Discord now. I did. I think I put it up on our website. So if you go to thesleazypodcast.com, you can find the link to the Discord there. And there's tons of cool channels there. There's an All Things Crazy channel. There's a Mr. PBS Learning Room, Classroom. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, did I put Classroom or something like yeah. that? Which you haven't posted in. I'm waiting to learn. There's just something. a couple little things. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting you to post some like crazy article that tells us something we don't know or Drop some knowledge yeah but uh you know uh and share the show with with people that i mean that's ultimately how we grow and i think you you know those of you that do do it uh but yeah and don't be afraid to comment on things tell us if something sucks and we'll talk about your opinion on the show just oh. like we did the one guy that said not everything needs to be a podcast tell it tell us how much you enjoy another uh, podcast hosted by some 30 something white guys. Yeah. Just what the world needs. Exactly. I, you know, I really feel like we're at that age where we're, we're out of touch. <laughs> like we're the guys that should be retiring from the Senate now. Right. <laughs> you know, It's like, as uh, we're talking about the Super Bowl, like, you know, uh, there was a time when Usher would have been like the contemporary act. Yeah. But those songs were 20 years ago. So we're the legacy act now. Yep. But, All right. Well, that's all we have for this episode. And as always, keep it sleazy. Thanks for listening to the Sleazy Podcast. (laughs) Make sure you hit the subscribe button and remember, listen to Sleazy. (laughs)